These wires simulate the feeling of being in low gravity. Ember and Tessa will be practicing the bunny hop, the slow motion jog, and the side to side. All of these maneuvers were used by our Apollo astronauts for their walk on the moon. Whoa, uh oh! Dude, that right there is why Neil Armstrong called it one small step for man. You're getting it, Tessa. Come on, girl. Follow my lead. Excellent. And that right there is why we can now call it one giant leap for womankind. Son, you just got school. The good news for you future astronauts is that eating in space has come a long way. Each shuttle packs enough food to last the length of a mission, with a safe haven system providing every astronaut even more weeks of food in case of emergency. And you've told us that on any mission, things can and will go wrong, which means we have to be prepared to handle any problem. Funny you should bring that up. Let me guess. We're about to have one of those be prepared moments. Looks like there's a malfunction between mission control and our communication system. Trainees, this will be a test of your resilience and creativity. It will be your job to fix the malfunction and resume contact by the end of camp tomorrow. Okay, all communication has been cut off and we have till end of the day tomorrow to fix it. Any ideas? Settle down, everyone. Zach the big dog's here. Now, we'll run an analysis on the comm system, identify the prob, and fix it. You're welcome. The system's got thousands of parts. It could take days to get us up and running again. You got a better idea, Minnie Me? We could build our own radio. At my other school, we made contact with the International Space Station through Eris. It was really cool. Look at you. Who's the big dog now, Zachary? Do you want to fill us in on what Eris is? Uh, the program supports putting amateur radio transmitters on board the International Space Station. That way, astronauts are able to make ham radio contact with users around the world. We could maybe strip parts from the simulator and make something. Soup's easy. We can make a diode from heating copper wire. Uh, also, we'll need a few other things. A coil, antenna, and a capacitor. Awesome. Uh, Gordon, can you start assembling the capacitor? Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, easy. Dude, it's just two pieces of metal separated by an insulator. Yeah, I, I know that. I, I just thought, cause like, Days kind of over, you know. If we move fast, we could do it, but I guess there's no need to rush and chance messing it up. Okay, we'll start first thing in the morning. I've scanned the leaf for any hidden clues or invisible ink. Nothing. <laughs> and I think I may be allergic. Ooh, Em, you only get your microscope out when it's serious business. What are we looking at? How do you drop this outside the elevator? I think it might be a clue as to what she's up to. One clue? It's a strange thing to find in Maywood Glen. It's a piece of a banana leaf. Unless your sister went out for Guatemalan tamales with ancho chili sauce wrapped in banana leaves, I've got nada. Did y'all know the banana is naturally radioactive because of the potassium content and the teeny amounts of potassium 40? Are you suggesting my sister might be radioactive? Don't fret. <laughs> the levels are insignificant. Not like she's gonna start glowing in the dark. <laughs> Good afternoon, agents. Hoping for a progress report. Well, I did restock the fridge with your cold pressed green juice. Nicely done. But I was referring to the three T's. Our latest suspect is Elite's lighting engineer. Cameron Breyer on it. And we were just discussing this harmless piece of a banana leaf. Same one I noticed on your nightstand, Agent McAllister. Maddie dropped it when we saw her in the hotel. Which I forgot to mention. Sorry. But we did see those banana leaves down at the Maywood Glen docks. Which means your sister might have been down at the docks. The same docks where the three T's are arriving. Your colleagues are raising a very interesting possibility. Which I refuse to believe. There's no way Maddie could be involved with the 3T robberies. Is that Agent McAllister talking or a worried sister? I adore them both, but this is definitely worried sister. <laughs> Salud. Well, here's what I think. Maybe Maddie was trying to leave us a clue. Maybe she really is in danger. We're going down to the docks, so whatever the truth is, we're gonna get some answers. Right, good idea. <laughs> you know what you need to do. And 
And I know you guys are giving me that Michaela's got it all wrong look. <laughs> Don't be you silly. You got it all wrong. Meaning you've got it all wrong that we think you've got it all wrong. I'm gonna stop talking. I've repurposed my original Cam's cat cam with Cam's catch a criminal cam. You don't know what I had to do to get it off the cat. Now we just have to get it on that grady. Follow my lead. My gosh, I'm so sorry. I told my friend Cam a million times not to ride that thing inside because you never know when someone's gonna take a left when you thought that they were gonna take a right, and then they take that left and you take a right and boom. Uh, don't worry, I'm I'm fine. Okay, bye. <laughs> Camera planted. Now wherever he goes, we go. Guys, listen. I fear the day that technology will surpass our human interaction. The world will have a generation of idiots. Albert, Albert Einstein. Einstein. With a favorite quote like that, Gruber could so be retro. He does wear corduroy bell bottoms. It's muy tragic. Tragic? Or all part of a retro wardrobe. Gruber also always carries around that suspicious man purse. Maybe he's hiding a spare retro mask. Kim and I have him second period. We've got to get a look inside that man purse. But how are we supposed to do it without our usual tech wear? Good thing I always carry the classic Innovate Issue Secret Agent gear. The decoder ring and lipstick message shooter. We're gonna need a distraction. I've got it covered. And it's battery powered. Isn't this refreshing? Nobody sneaking glances down to their screens. Everybody ready to learn? Uh. Now, you will have to write down your answers to today's quiz on a piece of paper with a pencil. The yellow wooden thingy with the rubber doodad on the end? Yes, Justin. The yellow wooden thingy with the rubber doodad on the end. Kyle, look, I'm really sorry about before. I just have some things on my mind. It's fine. No big deal. You ever hear the one about the geometry class that was always tired? They were out of shape. <laughs> she could shape and geometry. Hey. Commence bugging. Where's that coming from? Class, I think we have a visitor. It's my portable long range acoustic device. I modified the extra ultrasound sensors for my dad's remote control model rocket. Over here? It's for Helix the cat's birthday. Gotcha. You made your sister's cat a birthday present? And if you spoil the surprise for him, I'll be way crazy. <clears throat> Uh, you know, I think it's coming from over there. Hmm? Uh, nope, it's definitely coming from over there. Mm -hmm. well, everyone just focus on your work. Let's see what you're hiding in your man purse, Gruber. Uh, gotcha. Tuna with the crust cut off. Happy teaching. Love, mom. <laughs> My hand's cramping up.
Ladies and gentlemen, children of all ages, prepare to be amazed by the magical stylings of the magnificent, sensational, one and only, the almost as great as the great Barnaby, the great Michaela. It's not much of a crowd. Don't forget, Michaela wants us to let her know right away if we see her father coming. And remember, that picture's 10 years old. I know, Michaela's totes cute. And as a tribute to Barnaby, I will be executing many of his tricks. Some were basic. Some more complicated. Now, for my next trick, I'll need a member from the audience. I'll do it. Yeah, Over here. Over here. How about you, miss? Oh. <laughs> I'm gonna try to make this ball jump from your closed fist into this one. We're gonna take this other ball and when you say jump, I'm gonna make these two balls switch places. All right? Uh, I mean, I guess. One, two, three, jump. Now, open your hands. <laughs> now, watch. Watch. Hey, that's my watch. You see, magic is all about the art of misdirection. While you were focused on my right hand, I was actually doing something more important with my left. It's called magic. Um, I think we're good with the smoke effect. It was only supposed to be a poof, but this is no poof. It's coming from the stage floor. Let's see if we can find the source. There's gotta be a trap door. We need to evacuate the audience. Ladies and gentlemen, we're experiencing an equipment malfunction. Please follow me to the nearest exit. It's not smoke, it's fog. It is? Feel it. Smoke is dry, but fog juice uses glycerin. It's a humectant. Just imagine that you're in a steam room at a spa. Sounds relaxing, but soon we won't be able to see two feet in front of us. If someone really is after me or us, we'll be completely vulnerable. The door's locked. We're trapped. And when she says trapped, she only means we're temporarily unable to exit. <laughs> Why don't we check the other door? That'll be fun, huh? I found a trapped door. And it's locked. We have to find a way to vent this fog. Fog is just a low-lying cloud with teeny water droplets. When it rains, the moisture coalesces with the fog molecules. The droplets get heavier and fall by gravity. Great, so all we have to do is make it rain? The sprinkler system! It's locked! There's no way out! Wait, like Michaela said, magic is simply the art of misdirection. Be right back. Come on. Let's go straight. 